This week's episode of One Piece was pretty super duper. Luffy and the gang throw down with a gargantuan stone giant, Pika. And Frankie, the pompadour wearing cyborg, throws down with the navy, bringing down his arsenal of ass kickery. Not only that, but Usopp, Nico Robin, and the Tone Tata tribe prepare to have a full on assault on Treble and Sugar. I loved this episode. The minute it started up, it gave us some really great action, some great animation, and Pika is awesome. Don't let the name fool you. He's not some cute looking little Pokemon. He's this massive giant who can assimilate with stone. He's a stone stone man. And considering they're in a massive castle right now, he pretty much has the advantage. And his entrance is not only badass, but it's really creepy. His actual look is so disturbing, especially his dead eyes. That and the fact that he doesn't say anything. He just slowly emerges from the walls and tries to crush our main heroes. Luffy gives him a few cool punches and even blasts right through him with some Gatling techniques, which is definitely probably my favorite part of the episode. But as soon as they try to escape, he's able to trap them, and then they cut away to something else. And I want to see so much more from this, because they've been building up Pika so much. But Luffy and Pika didn't really steal the entire scene. In the beginning, there's like a whole assault on the castle, which is really great because we get to see Zoro doing stuff, Kinemon, and especially Violet. She is so awesome, and I really want her to be a member of the Straw Hat Pirates. And that's because she seems to be the most capable female that I've seen so far in this arc. Don't get me wrong, I like Rebecca, but Violet is just hardcore. It's, it's all about the roundhouse kicks. Another odd pairing is Kinemon and Wicca. They're actually going to be teaming up with each other going down to the toy house, but they're all going in the same direction, so that just works. I can't wait to see how they're going to interact with each other. Frankie was also really great this week. He didn't do anything in terms of like action that we haven't seen before, but every single time he's on screen, he's just a laugh riot. You know, just his overall look combined with his unpredictable nature, like when he suddenly pulls out a guitar singing the pirate blues, or where he goes through a lot of different weird haircuts, some of which are really awesome. I particularly like the mohawk and the guile cut from Street Fighter, which I was kind of hoping he would use, but he went back to the cannon haircut, and that's when he starts firing on the Navy like a madman. And even Senor Pink is pretty impressed. Cavendish is having a pretty shitty day in this week's episode, and that's because Treble and Sugar turn him into a toy. This is all thanks to Treble's sticky, sticky fruit abilities, which... The jokes write themselves. I'm not even going to attempt going over that line. But you got Sugar, whose powers are really creepy because all she has to do is touch you, give you an order, whether that be the whole family makes you do whatever they want, and that basically just turns them into these creepy toy slaves that can't even talk back. And everybody loses their memory. Even Treble himself mentions that he lost memory of who Cavendish was the minute he was turned into a toy. And that just makes her all the more disturbing, just imagining what she could actually do with these powers. But it looks like she's going to have to use them soon because right outside the door is Usopp, Robin, and the Tone Tata tribe. And the Tone Tata tribe has this plan where they've created this fake grape made out of Tone, tabas tone Tata Tabasco. Tone, tone, ta it, it's, it's Tone Tata Tabasco sauce, all right? I can't remember what it was called. It's basically glorified hot sauce. And it almost killed a few members of their tribe when they were testing it out, but... I don't know how this is going to work at all. It just seems a little too ridiculous to work. And who knows? This is one piece. You can't really judge a book by its cover. This might be the greatest plan of all time. But I just don't see it going that smoothly. Otherwise, the episode just sort of ends with Usopp completely freaking out to the to-be-continued screen. So what's the rundown? On this week's episode of One Piece, it was really good. I liked it. It was mostly an action episode, and you guys know me. I'm an action junkie. I love that stuff. In particular, I love the first half. The battle with Pika was awesome and definitely featured the best animation of the episode, especially the build-up to Pika's appearance, just the rumbling through the castle, and then when he suddenly emerges all slowly and almost liquid-like. And his powers almost seem limitless. I mean, considering how much you can actually break him down and how he can assimilate all of his body parts, you literally have to destroy everything. But I can't wait to see more from this guy and learn a little bit more about his background because he's very mysterious, because he never says a word, and that's just got my attention already. He's just another one of those weird, crazy members of the Don Quixote family, but I think he's probably the most intimidating member I've seen thus far. The, uh, the next one in line would be Diamante, but he's still got that goofy grin on his face, so I can't really take him seriously. And I'm kind of hoping they would go back to Korea to Coliseum, but at least we still got plenty of action this week. Frankie was awesome, as usual. Like I mentioned earlier, he doesn't really 
do anything we haven't seen, but he's just a lot of fun to watch. He's always funny, and I enjoy everything that he does. The stuff with Cavendish is just creepy when they just talk about, like, how it all happens and just seeing the process of someone turned into a toy. Just how hopeless the situation is because Treble has them stuck and then Sugar just takes over from there. It's a very creepy situation, and the, the whole atmosphere there where he's just immediately put to work and there's nothing he can do about it is just very depressing, and you can really just see how uh, that's just sort of boiled over in Dressrosa, which is leading to this huge revolution by the uh, Tone Tata tribe, which were a lot of fun this week. So, I really like this episode. I, I really am kind of disappointed, though, that we didn't get back to Corita Coliseum because Sabo is involved and Jesus Burgess and freaking Diamante, but... That's just the way the Dressrosa arc is working, where they're constantly skipping around to a lot of different people's stories because there's like 6, 10, 50 different ones going on at once. It's just absolutely crazy. But that's what I really like about it, because you never really know what's going to happen next. But I liked this episode. I thought it had pretty good animation, artwork, it was funny, the voice acting and the music is always as good as it has been. It's just pure classic One Piece. So fans of the series will definitely love it, and fans of action anime should check this episode out too. So I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Not a perfect episode, but definitely a really good watch for One Piece fans. So check it out. Cool stuff. Thank you guys for watching my review. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and like the video. And please tell me what you thought about this week's episode of One Piece. Did you have a favorite action scene? And what do you want to see from the rest of the Dressrosa arc? You guys can also subscribe to our channel if you have not already. You can do that by clicking on the icon right up here. You guys can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter.